What's up, everybody? Welcome to Cat Daddy Quick Tips with me, your cat daddy, Jackson Galaxy, with a quick tip. All about very specific circumstances and what you can do to get through them with ease, panache, a little bit of grace, and not any fighting. Today I'm talking about the concept of non-recognition aggression. This is something that you might have seen happen if you've got a multi-cat household or multi-dog household or multi-animal household and one of those animals goes to the vet and they come back and suddenly there's a fight. Something breaks out. Or even if there's not a fight, there's a lot of suspicion and some growling or some something. And the animal who just came home from the vet who already, let's face it, probably didn't have the best day in the world is suddenly facing a worse day because the other animals are like, I do not like you for no good reason. Because when you left, everybody knew each other and suddenly they don't. And that's non-recognition aggression. It happens in this instance because when they go to the vet, and especially if they've gone under anesthesia, they come back smelling completely differently than when they left the house. Cats really do a lot of identification when it comes to community through scent. And that's why a lot of them will just bump noses when they see each other. It's just a little bit of scent, I smell you. All right, we're moving on to the next thing. Being able to recognize scent from cat to cat is just so very important to them. And you would think, well, wait a minute, when they see each other, isn't that plenty? I know you, your name is Audrey. And I know you, your name is Lily. Hello, Lily, hello, Audrey. How are you? We walk by each other. I sniff you, I sniff you. I might smell your butt, but I know who you are. We have been living together. I know you just as well as I know myself, and we have a certain way of being. Well, you were Lily when you left. Why aren't you Lily now? It's scent. And again, when they go to the vet office, whether they're just being examined, whether they're going under anesthesia for something as simple as a tooth cleaning, whether it's something more invasive, where they've had an IV going through them, they, it changes the way the other animals perceive them when they come home based on smelling very differently. Or, you know, in more human terms, you walk through the door of the house and you've been away somewhere and you come back and you smell like someone else, right? You're covered in cologne. Or you're wearing a pair of sunglasses that definitely don't belong to you. I don't trust you. That's like that. And this is somebody you've lived with for a very long time. You talking to me? It's not just about the cat who went to the vet stepping out of the carrier and suddenly like everyone's like, I don't get you and they jump on them and then there's a big fight. Now when you step out of that carrier, there might be that moment and that moment is freeze. Yeah, there's a little bit of freeze here and now we're staring at each other. Well, I'm the only one here. And now that opens the door for bad communication with animals, with cats that moment can immediately escalate. Even if these are animals who have known each other, litter mates, you guys, litter mates. I've seen this happen with litter mates who are seven years old, that if they are separated, they come back with a weird smell and there is that moment of stare down because I don't get you, that could just quickly snowball. So non-recognition aggression is not just about the smell, not just about coming home from the vet and having that smell where I don't recognize you anymore, I don't know who you are. It's also what then comes with it. That moment of, wait, I'm smelling you and I'm really smelling you intently. I'm smelling you way more intently than I normally would because I'm not getting this. And then the cat who just came back from the vet, who by the way, could be coming out of anesthesia, could be having a real rough day anyway, and man, I don't need your nose there because I've been having a rough day. You see how it goes, you guys? It's not just like, wait, you smell differently. Let me beat you up. It's, it's about a whole lot of little moments which start with something smells off and then quickly becomes, I don't trust you. I don't get you. And then we get into a fight. So what can you do that's a very quick idea to make sure that when you come home with your cat, that when they come out of that carrier, everyone goes, hey, what's up, Lily, how are you? Well, here's an easy one. Now, it's funny because I set up this whole little prop thing here to demonstrate how you can get your cats to recognize each other. And the second I put this prop down, this happened. Hey, Audrey, do you think you can give me my prop back? 
Okay, so now that Audrey has thank thankfully given me my prop back, this was the prop I was talking about. So this bed here, which is this lovely Jackson Galaxy bed, let's say this is a bed that all of the cats use in the house. It doesn't have to be just the one cat who's going to the vet, but as long as it gets used by that one cat, great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take this t-shirt and we're gonna put it on the bed. Now it's great if it has my scent on it too, by the way, this doesn't have to be exclusive. It doesn't have to be this like, only the one cat uses this thing, you know, but it doesn't hurt at all. Like I said, if this has my scent on it, the other cats, all good. As long as she lays on this um, on the regular uh, before we go to the vet. Now, just to make sure before we leave for the vet, We'll take the shirt and we're gonna just rub her down with it. I'm sorry, we've got a dog stand in right now, but let's just say it's Audrey here. And we're just gonna rub Audrey down with this. And Audrey's like, oh, this is great, I love this. Now we have Audrey on a shirt, you know? So now when we go to the vet, we have this, we take this with us. This is scent identification gold right here. So now before we get out of the carrier, on your way home, even before you even leave the vet's office, you take this shirt and you rub your cat down with that shirt again. They may not be thrilled with it, honestly, uh, because they've been poked a little bit and it's been a vet type of day. That's okay, they'll forgive you in the long run. You, when they step out of that carrier, again, that scent, whether it's just theirs, whether it's them mixed with the other cats or dogs or you, which is just great, they then smell the way they did before they left the house. They don't have that odd scent on them. So let me tell you something, you guys, this little ratty t-shirt can save the day. Again, put this on a bed they will sleep on a lot, a place where you know the cat tends to spend time. At the very least, right before you leave the house, rub them down. Put it in a Ziploc or something that goes with you in the car so that this little piece of scent identification gold is kept nice and pristine. And then right before you come home, you rub them down again. Their scent is back so that when they come out of the car, all they have is that scent that is theirs and not the office, not the, the anesthesia, not the alcohol, not the whatever was on them before, just them. And it just is a nice little shortcut uh, to get everything back on the good foot once they get back home. So that's just a quick tip for the day, which is how to short circuit uh, non-recognition aggression when a cat comes back home from the vet into the world of their compadres back home which, you know, when I say compadres in my house, that's a lot of compadres. In your house, it could be just one other cat. Again, I've seen it happen with litter mates. Quick way of making sure it doesn't happen. Right on, you guys. That's your quick tip for the day. I am your quick tipping cat daddy, Jackson Galaxy. Not ear tipped, quick tipping. Big difference, you know? All right, until next time, all light and all love and all mojo to you. Meow.